Hello and welcome to Downtime Fun. Once in a while, I'll take some time off from solving puzzles and think about the tech that I've been using on a daily basis. Around eight months ago, I reviewed the M1 MacBook Air, and in this video, I want to discuss my long-term experience with this laptop. If you have missed my previous video on the MacBook Air, you can click the link up here to see what I thought when I first got this computer. Anyway, many people were waiting for a new MacBook Pro in WWDC last month. But instead, Apple only announced a new M1 iPad Pro and some software updates, leaving many of us slightly disappointed. With this in mind, many went back to consider the M1 MacBooks again. So is it still a good purchase today, 8 months after its initial release? Let me share my thoughts with you in this video. Okay, so I won't say I'm the most demanding type of computer user, but I do use this computer exclusively for editing my 4K videos. My configuration for this laptop is the higher-end 16GB RAM model with 8 GPU cores. The editing and exporting experience remains super smooth. I use Final Cut Pro exclusively, which is fully optimized for the M1 chips. There are many benchmark videos out there, so if you are interested, you can just go and check them out. In short, it is plenty fast and surely not the bottleneck for my creative process. I have upgraded mine to 1TB of storage. It is quite expensive, but was it worth it? I'd say yes. The reason is that for my video projects, they usually take up around 100 gig each, and I tend to have around two to three projects worth of footage stored on my computer. So the basic 256 gigs of storage is not sufficient for me. I also do not need to attach an external SSD every time I work on my projects, which is just great. Just now we were talking about external SSDs and I feel I should address the logical follow-up question. The answer is yes, you will need a dongle. There are only two USB-C Thunderbolt ports on the left, which is unlikely to be enough especially one of them will be used for power. The hub I'm using is the simple Anchor 7-in-1 which includes the card readers, USB-A ports, HDMI out and through power through for charging. We should serve 95% of the needs if not more. The only port missing here is the Ethernet port, which is optional really. At launch, the M1 chip did not play well with Bluetooth connections. I had troubles even when I was trying to connect Apple's own Magic Mouse. Not to mention the Logitech's MX Master 3. But since some software updates early this year, the issue has already been solved and all connections has been stable and reliable. One annoying connectivity issue that I faced is that the software support is still not 100% perfect. It does not support my Canon R6 camera so it cannot work as a webcam through the Canon's webcam utility. This is really a personal thing and it depends what you need from a computer. The most popular productivity apps such as Microsoft Office and Adobe Suite is already available to run native on M1 Max. Final Cut Pro and Logic obviously works. I use Pixelmator instead of Photoshop, which is already good enough for me. There is no Netflix, which is which can be a hassle. I haven't done much FaceTime or Skype calls on this computer. Usually it's done on my phone or iPad Pro, which has a better camera in my opinion. The mic is clear, but not studio quality as Apple claims. I tried using it for voiceover in my videos, but I swapped back to my Zoom mics immediately because it just sounded so-so. Actually, you may hear the difference already because I am recording with the onboard mic, so you can hear them for yourself. Being called the Air, it's the lightest laptop that Apple makes. It's actually lighter than the iPad Pro with the Magic Keyboard altogether. However, I'll recommend you to check it out physically before buying it to make sure it's within your expectations. I carry this around almost every day, and at times I wish it can be as light as some of the Windows laptops such as the Lenovo X1. I did not do any comparison videos as I don't have an 8GB model, but I chose the 16GB just because I just want this computer to be more future-proof, and the extra RAM may be helpful for video editing. From my experience, the air will get quite warm under heavy load, mainly during video rendering, However, I don't see much thermal throttling and does not impact my workflow. If you need the maximum speed, say video rendering, especially for larger projects real time, then the Pro will be a better choice. 
No, I will just get the M1 version plus a dongle, unless your life depends on the 16 inch screen. Absolutely yes, by now you should be able to see that how much I like this computer, the performance is great and I think I can say it's a bargain. I will answer this question with a question back to yourself. If you need a computer now, you should not wait and just buy this. I don't think a huge performance bump will happen for a casual user or an enthusiast like me down the road, but if you can wait, meaning that you have no imminent need, I'd say you just you should just wait for the next Air, which will have a form factor upgrade with smaller bezels and maybe a coloured shell. All in all, this is my long term review on the M1 MacBook Air. If you want to know anything more that I didn't mention in this video, leave a comment below and I will try to answer them if I know the answer. Hope this video helped, if it did, consider subscribing to my channel please. And in the meantime, take care and I will see you in the next video. Bye!